Is Buckeyes offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien leaving already? He just got there. Locked on Big Ten starts right now. You are locked on Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit fanduel.com slash lockdown and get started. So. Bill O'Brien get a bolt from the Buckeyes. We're going to talk about that. And of course, I found out that Michigan and Ohio State football players may actually get along off the field. Plus, we'll have our picks going into the weekend. Be sure to subscribe and follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you'll get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. So there's been an interesting development in the coaching world. Okay, Boston College. That job just opened up. And many are wondering if brand new Ohio State offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien would be interested in the job. Now, if it were me, I would find it difficult to turn my back on a nice job that I haven't even unpacked my office for and a bolt for another one. But I've seen some crazy stuff happen. So have you. So let's look into it. I would not rule this out. Wednesday. Jeff Hafley left Boston College, the head coach there, to become the defensive coordinator of the Green Bay Packers. Now, the coaching carousel is pretty much kind of slowing down here. Everybody's where they're going to be. The NFL coaching carousel, the head coaching jobs are all done, but they're still picking, uh, picking the fruit from other trees here, trying to fill out their staffs with assistance around the NFL. But what a weird time. Kind of calming down with Coach Carousel. Recruiting coming up here next week. Signing day for college football. Lots to talk about. Uh, because of the timing here, if an NFL team offers a job to a college coach of any kind, whether it be head coach or assistant, that can leave the university program in a jam. After all, uh, the February signing period starts February 7th, the 7th next week. It's here. And these are for recruits that did not sign in the early signing period in December. I mean, can you imagine being in a position like Boston College right now in the athletic department and you're trying to sign kids next week and you have no head coach? Kids aren't going to go where they don't know who's coaching them or what's going on unless they really, really, really have a true love for the school and that's where they want to go no matter what. So they need to act fast. And there's a pretty long list of speculative candidates for the Boston College job. The one that keeps coming up is Boston native Bill O'Brien. Very, very interesting. Um, he's got he's got a lot of ties to the area, and let's explore that just a little bit. Look, he's one that's gone back and forth in coaching between the NFL and college, so he has a very interesting resume for anything that works that would come open. He successfully took over Penn State, the head coaching job there, immediately in the aftermath of the Joe Paterno, Jerry Sandusky scandal. Uh, as a coach, I would have avoided that job like the plague at the time, but I got to give him credit. A lot of people give him credit in the coaching world. He stabilized a really bad situation over there at Penn State. In fact, he impressed so many people that uh, the Houston Texans decided that they wanted to hire him and made him their head coach. And he did well. He won four division titles there in seven years. But then near the end, he took on the GM role, wore both hats, and like I've said before, GM Bill O'Brien cost Coach Bill O'Brien his job. And so he was out. He joined Bill Belichick's staff at the Patriots as offensive coordinator, worked with Tom Brady. Then he joined Nick Saban as offensive coordinator at Alabama and returned back to the Patriots this past year. He reportedly was never in the mix to become the Patriots head coach when Bill Belichick departed. And uh, just a few days ago, 
became the offensive coordinator with Ryan Day and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Now, we actually talked about this at length last week and again yesterday because Ryan Day just recently did an interview explaining himself as to why he went out and got such a big-name guy like Bill O'Brien to be his offensive coordinator. He said, look, man, I need some help. I needed a guy. He's got 31 years experience. I wouldn't just hand over my offense to anybody. He fit the bill. And so for the 2024 season, Bill O'Brien's going to run the offense. And this is something that Ryan Day has already, uh, he's, he's done himself the whole time. Ryan Day, offensive guy. But Ryan Day's got his plate full. He's got too much going on at such a high level at Ohio State. The name, image, and likeness, transfer portals, all the head coaching jobs at these college football jobs have, have changed almost overnight. And they're almost too much for one person. So if you can take a big chunk of it, like offensive game planning and developing quarterbacks, they got five young quarterbacks in that quarterback room and just hand it off, it will help Ryan Day out a lot. And so he was glad to have Bill O'Brien there. I just think this is the new way uh, how things are going to be with these major college football programs. So he felt like the right guy was Bill O'Brien until maybe he's not the right guy. Would O'Brien leave the Boston College job was offered to him? It would certainly pay more than he's making at Columbus, but not a lot more. You know, Halfley was only making $3 million a year there. And I would bet you, I don't know this. I looked it up. Haven't been able to find it yet. I don't know if they actually signed a contract yet at Ohio State. These things take time. I would bet O'Brien's deal at Ohio State is in the $2 million a year range. Just a guess, an educated guess. I'm pretty certain, though, that O'Brien wants to be a head coach again. And he has to decide, does he want to be a, a, a college head coach or an NFL head coach? He's always you know bouncing back and forth in between. He is a Boston native. And given his recent time with the Patriots, probably still owns his house that's sitting over there. And wouldn't he have to really move? If O'Brien bolted, it would be a great situation for Boston College and a quick fix to stop the bleeding in time for recruiting and signing in spring ball, which is just a few weeks away. It would be devastating for Ryan Day and Ohio State. They got that young core, the five quarterbacks I mentioned. They need direct attention because Bill O'Brien also, in addition to being an offensive coordinator, was a good quarterbacks coach. And until a starter emerges there, they need somebody with full attention on that quarterback room at Ohio State. So if he does leave, and I'm not saying he is, I'm just saying it's out there. And I always believe with the smoke, there's fire, right? I'm sure phone calls are being made. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the situation when uh, Manny Diaz left his job with the Miami Hurricanes. Remember that? That was in 2018. He was the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes. The Temple job opened up, and he left to become the head coach at Temple. He was there for 18 days. During that time, Mark Richt, all of a sudden, suddenly just stepped down. Burnout and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, Manny Diaz says, well, sorry, Temple. I know I haven't been here three weeks yet, but Miami's offered me the head coach, and I want to be the head coach of Miami Hurricanes, so I'm gone. It's not the exact same situation, but it's kind of got some similar elements to it, and uh, it's happened before. That's why we we mentioned it, and uh, we'll keep an eye and see how quickly that job gets filled there at Boston College. Very fascinating story, nonetheless, and uh, very fascinating from the standpoint of Ohio State. We love your comments as well, uh, as well on uh, Twitter or X at TalkBig10, number 10. Don't forget our website, TalkBig10Number10.com, and on YouTube. And speaking of our website, Talk Big Ten, number 10.com. Get all sorts of Big Ten merch there. Hats, uh, fan pennants, shirts, shirts of your favorite school. It's all there. Uh, so check that out. Ticket information. You want to go to a Big Ten sporting event? It's all right there. Right at our website. Plus, we archive all of our podcasts, including this one. It'll be on there. And uh, again, that is Talk Big Ten, number 10. Don't spell it out. It's the number 10.com. All right. So I recently found out, I found out, I've heard this before, but, uh, you know, a lot of us fans, and I see it on the comments, you know, Michigan fans going after Ohio State fans. I know what the rivalry is like, and it is intense on the football field. But apparently off the football field, they all get along. We'll talk about that, something we learned from uh, Mobile, Alabama, the Senior Bowls. Practice goes on there this week. We'll talk about that. 
And of course, we'll have our picks later on right here in a minute on Locked On Big Ten. Happy Super Bowl to all of you who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, I like my Super Bowl routine. I like to be on the couch, I like to have the food, I like to have the beverages, and I'm ready to go. And I got my phone or all my prop bets that I got going on. It's, it's the greatest prop bet day in the world. Super Bowl Sunday. It's fantastic. FanDuel has a lot of ways for you to end the season with a win. Maybe two, maybe three, maybe a parlay, whatever you want. It's all there. Not only can you bet on who will win the Super Bowl and win with Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel has bets for, you know, which players will score the touchdown, which who will score first, who will score in the fourth quarter, who will have more field goals, how many points will be scored. Can you guess the exact score? Who will win the coin toss, heads or tails? What color will the Gatorade be? Delta, you can bet on all of that on Super Sunday. It's wonderful. New customers, join today and you'll get $200 of bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and sign up today. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. I want to thank everybody for making Lockdown Big Ten your first listen each and every day, especially you everydayers out there. Meanwhile, be sure to subscribe. Hit us up down there and um, also share and follow and like Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And once again, don't forget to hit our website, talkbig10number10.com. You'll love it. All right, so Michigan and Ohio State players, they have uh, they really go at it, have for decades. Biggest rivalry in sports. I think there's a lot of hatred there. But you know what? I've learned you can become frenemies. Frenemies. That's right. That's what's going on at the Senior Bowl right now. Senior Bowl is this weekend. Practice is going on. And uh, evaluations for kids who want to take to the next level and go to the NFL. That's what it's all about. Six players from the national champion Michigan Wolverines and two players from the Ohio State Buckeyes are on the same team. Got to get along. On the same team now, right? Uh, Michigan defensive end Jalen Harrell said that things have been pretty cool since he arrived this week with Ohio State kids. In fact, Ohio State safety Josh Proctor came up to him, said, all right, man, let's break the ice right now. Let's be cool. Let's get along. We're on the same team. Harrell says he's been fr uh, friendly ever since. He says it's really easy because they both have a mutual respect for each other and the fact that they're both trying to get to the NFL together. So. It's all good. And he even said the Michigan Ohio state rivalry on the field is as big as it gets, but off the field, it's a much different story. Uh, Michigan offensive lineman, Trevor Keegan. He also agreed. He said, yeah, we all made up. We're cool. He said Proctor and Ohio state defensive tackle. Michael Hall jr. Are really cool dudes. Quote unquote. Other news. You know, who's been really impressive out there at practice this week is Michigan wide receiver, Roman Wilson heard a lot of heads the first couple of days but now he has an undisclosed injury and he sat out day three the game is saturday in mobile one o'clock eastern you can catch it on the nfl network by the way and hopefully roman wilson is okay on to iowa football for a minute at least one major sports network has put iowa's kirk ferentz on a retirement watch you thought i was gonna say hot seat right they always go oh who's on the hot seat next year kirk's not on the hot seat that's ridiculous but a, a retirement seat, a retirement watch, really? That's not ageist. Um, he's won too many games, man. He's not. Uh, he's not going. I look. I would say this about Kirk Ferentz. You know, I would watch the relationship between him and athletic director uh, Beth Getz. It'll be a strong influence on how much he enjoys his job. She was the one that laid the hammer down on his son. Uh, Brian Ferentz, the offense coordinator, uh, at least publicly, there doesn't seem to be any collateral damage from that, but we'll see. Now, I would tell you my opinion. My opinion is if Kirk Ferentz was going to retire, it would have been just this last year. I mean, think about it. 25 years, nice big number, quarter of a century. The sun got fired. Maybe it's not as fun anymore. He made it to the Big Ten Championship. 
Now this upcoming year, we got new teams coming in from the Pac-12 with USC, UCLA, Washington, Oregon. It's going to be a lot tougher. There's no more easier West division to play in anymore. You got to deal with name, image, and likeness and all the transfer portal issues on top of recruiting and keeping it going. That would have, This would have been the year to retire for Kirk Ferentz. But he must really, really love it. And I actually speculated for about a half a minute I th- at the end of the season. I thought, mm, I wonder if this is it. Because he was saying stuff like, boy, I really, really. It was kind of getting misty-eyed and, and, and kind of reminiscing a little bit in his last press conference or two. And I thought, hmm, maybe since his son is going, he's going to go with him once they finish this amazing season. No, he's still there. So if he didn't do it then, I don't know when he's going to do it. He must really love it because he's still getting after it. He would. Uh, he is, by the way, the longest tenured coach by six years. Turned 69 in August. He signed a contract extension in 2022 that goes to 2029. Okay, he's still got five more years left on that deal. So I don't know that he's going anywhere anytime soon. He's doing a pretty good job. He still seems to have the energy for it. And he still really likes it because he's, look, he's the big man in the state of Iowa, right? It's a cool place to be. Since UCLA is one of those teams coming to the Big Ten, here's one to keep an eye on. Bruins head coach Chip Kelly. He's the subject of a couple NFL rumors. And since the Washington Commanders just named Dan Quinn as head coach this week, Quinn might be interested in Kelly's services as an offensive coordinator. Would he take it? I mean, if you're a head coach at a major university, would you – leave to go be an offense coordinator in the NFL. It's kind of a lateral-ish move. But then there was another story. that Some think that Kelly might be the one trying to pursue maybe an offensive coordinator gig with Antonio Pierce and the Raiders and be an offensive coordinator there. So that's two stories that are floating out there. And again, where there's smoke, there's fire. There's something going on. Kelly is 60 years old. Stepping away from a college gig like this to be a coordinator, I like I said, I don't know. Now he did, and plus, and plus, not only that, to go back to the NFL where he, let's face it, he failed. He failed with the Eagles. He failed with the 49ers. What's the itch to get back into the NFL if you're if you're Kelly? I'm not sure. But since there are two separate rumors out there, I'm starting to think maybe he's looking for a parachute to get out of UCLA. Maybe. Why does he want to leave that gig? Well, maybe it's because of the stuff I was just talking about a minute ago. Maybe the game has changed so much with NIL and transfer portals, and it is a big headache being a college football coach these days. You know, whether that's the case in Kelly's case or not, I think it's going to be the reason that a lot of coaches get out of the game. I think it's one of the reasons that Nick Saban decided enough is enough. Look, these guys still love coaching on Saturdays. They still love coaching practice, still love dealing with the kids, but all this other stuff, NCA rules, name, image, and likeness, keep your kids from going to the transfer portal, finding new kids to come in to replace them from the transfer portal. In addition to recruiting rules, silly rules from the NCA, when you can talk to them, when you can't talk to them regarding the calendar. Look, I think it has something to do with Jim Harbaugh leaving. I think it has something to do with Nick Saban leaving. Maybe Chip Kelly wants to leave UCLA. It's becoming a young man's game where um, there's just so much going on. That uh, Some people say maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's a lot easier in the NFL. Maybe the pressure's higher. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But anyway, keep an eye on that situation for sure. Meanwhile, uh, take a look at Friday night hoops here in the Big Ten. Tonight, we got Ohio State at Iowa. That's 7 o'clock Eastern on FS1. It'll be one of the games that we pick. No women's game tonight on a Friday night. A bunch over the weekend, of course. I also want to remind you that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, in case you haven't heard yet. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day, local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows. Cover every single league, including Lockdown Big Ten, so go to Locked On Sports today on YouTube. And after you subscribe here, subscribe there. Then you got them both and you're good to go. The first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. All right. We are going to make our picks. It is a big weekend in the Big Ten with basketball. I, it's starting to become like 
bubble month. It's February. Are you on the bubble? Are you in the tournament? Are you out of the tournament? Where are you at right now? Some important games going on. We'll take a look at those in one minute, and I'll have my picks. Big Ten basketball, one minute here on Locked On Big Ten. All right. I always love to close out the week and make some bold predictions going into the weekend. And let's uh, check some of this out here. I'm going to put the basketball games on the schedule. And first, I want to get a couple of things rolling here. Let's put it on screen. If you're on audio only, I will describe them as best as I can so you can follow along. All right. Let's start it out here. We got uh, Friday night tonight. Mentioned a moment ago that Ohio State at Iowa game, 7 o'clock FS1, 7 o'clock Eastern time tonight. Um, Ohio State, they, again, shooting problems. Now they're on the road here, taking on Iowa, an Iowa basketball team that I think is coming on. I think they're coming on. So I am going to take the Iowa Hawkeyes in this game on Friday night. Sorry, Buckeye fans, for that. Okay. Now, uh, tomorrow. Got a slew of games going on. Penn State is in Bloomington against the Indiana Hoosiers. That is at 2 o'clock Eastern on FS1. Here's the deal. Um, the Hoosiers, I don't know who all showing up. I've looked at the injury reports. In their game against Iowa this past week, uh, Khalil Ware, who had missed a couple of games, he came back in uh, with a bad foot, had his leg wrapped, played great, by the way. Came down funny on a dunk. You could tell he was very uncomfortable. He's a tough kid. He finished the game. I don't know what his status is. Xavier Johnson, who had been in and out of the lineup with injuries his entire career and this whole season, you feel awful for him, was up uh, hanging on the rim and uh, trying to hold on to not slip and fall, but then he did fall off, landed awkwardly on his wrist. That looked bad. And Malik Renu. He, he really rolled his ankle in this game. So Indiana is about as banged up as they could be right now. So I think Penn State's going to come in here. They're, they're in a prime position to win this game. Uh, so we'll see. I'll give it to Penn State. So, so far, I'm taking Iowa over Ohio State. I think Penn State will come into a uh, very depleted Indiana team and win in Bloomington. Northwestern is at Minnesota. That's at 2 o'clock Eastern time on the Big Ten Network. This Northwestern team is drained. They're absolutely, and they're, you know, playing at home is one thing. Playing on the road, pretty tough. They had a tough game this week at Purdue. They had, they went overtime. They're one and one against Purdue. It's a very talented team, and both games went overtime. So Northwestern matches up with the, one of the best teams in the country. I think they're still going to be worn out. Back to back games on the road. Minnesota starting to play a little bit better. So I, I'm going to, I think Minnesota will get this one. If Northwestern wins this one, I'll take my hat off to them, and they're maybe on their way to a more special season. Okay, Rutgers at Michigan, four o'clock Eastern on the Big Ten Network. That's Saturday still. Rutgers grind it defense, no offense to speak of. You saw what they did to Purdue last week. Purdue got out of there with their lives at Rutgers. Now this one's on the road, but man, Jawan Howard and Michigan—they're in trouble. They only won one game in the month of January. So I'm going to take Rutgers in this one to win this basketball game. Elsewhere, I call this the bubble game. Maryland and Michigan State at Michigan State East Lansing, Saturday, 5.30 p.m. on Fox. It's a nationally televised game. Izzo coming off the 700th win. Maryland, Michigan State and Maryland are going to be these teams fighting for these Last couple of spots, they say five or six. They, I also think five or six teams get into the NCAA tournament for the Big Ten. And these are teams hovering around four, five, six. This is an important game between these two. It's a bubble game. I'm going to give Michigan State the edge here just because of the home court on this one. I, I think this game goes down to the wire. This is probably the most evenly matched game that we have on the Big Ten schedule this weekend. Number two, Purdue. At number six, Wisconsin. That is a Sunday, 1 o'clock. There's no NFL football. There's no NFL football. we got the week off before the Super Bowl. College basketball, Sunday, 1 o'clock. Number two, Purdue. And number six, Wisconsin on CBS. Huge game. Uh, Purdue, again, I just mentioned, the overtime win. They had a claw and beat Northwestern. And now they got to go on the road at Wisconsin. 
Wisconsin is going to be ready for them. This is a big game for Wisconsin. They got to prove themselves. Now, Wisconsin, they had their game Thursday night on the road at Nebraska, uh, but they're going to be amped up to take on the Purdue Boilermakers on this one and, and show who's maybe really the best in the Big Ten. At least that's what they're thinking. So that ought to be a really good basketball game as well. And then Sunday night at 6.30 on the Big Ten Network, Nebraska, who I just mentioned, had the home game against Wisconsin Thursday night on the road, taking out 14th-ranked Illinois. And um, Nebraska on the road is a much different team than at home. So I think I think Illinois will win this one. Oh, I don't think I picked the uh, Purdue-Wisconsin winner. I... <laughs> <laughs> I think I am. I think I'm going to pick Purdue. I'm going to pick Purdue, but man, that's going to be a great game. Purdue and Wisconsin. And then I'll pick Illinois over Nebraska. How's that? There we go. <laughs> I almost forgot to make the pick. I'm just sitting here. I love talking about the games. So let me recap. I want to take uh, uh, Iowa over Ohio state. I'm going to take Penn state over Indiana. I'm going to take uh, Minnesota to edge a tired Northwestern team. I'm going to take Rutgers. Uh, over Michigan, I am going to take Michigan State over Maryland. I'm going to take Purdue over Wisconsin. I'm going to take Illinois over Nebraska. There. It's all on the record. You can agree or disagree, by the way. Hit me up on comments on YouTube or on X, Twitter, wherever you want to find me. There you have it. All right? We're good to go. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Thank you for checking us out here, as always. Uh, don't forget, hit me up on Twitter or X. Um, that is at talk big 10, number 10, hit me up with the comments on YouTube and our website, talk big 10, number 10.com and get your merch, pennants, shirts, hats, everything right there. And tickets to all big 10 events right there. In the meantime, if you haven't yet help us out, if you don't mind and subscribe before you go and uh, follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app and you'll get the latest episode of lockdown big 10 as soon as it becomes available each and every day and don't forget lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube lockdown sports today all right 24 7 got everything going on local sports stories our podcast they're all over there uh, another second place for you to uh, check us out over there as well in the meantime have a great day have a great weekend Thank you so much. We're going to start since it's February. It's never too early. I know we got March Madness and basketball coming up around the corner. It is never too early to start previewing football. We got spring football. Some schools starting in just a couple weeks. It's here. It's all year round, really. So we'll take care of that with you as well. Appreciate you checking us out, telling your friends about us too, especially if you know some Big Ten alum out there that would like watching Lockdown Big Ten. All right. Thank you very much for Lockdown Big Ten. I'm Craig Sheeman. We'll see you next time.